Hey YouTube, Brian LCS, and welcome to a very special Comic Book Community 411. And my special guest tonight is Bruce from Spidey and Me. So Bruce, welcome. Thanks, Brian. I'm glad to be here tonight. So Bruce, before we kind of get into the, the formal, you know, the, the questions, why don't you do uh, a little, you know, introduction of, of yourself and, and your website okay. and your collection. And... Sounds good, Brian. Uh, I've been a Spider-Man super mega fan for over 55 years. Uh, I know I don't look like that. that I'm, I'm that old, but I started when I was about three and I've collected so many things over my lifetime and I've gotten all the comic books. I've gotten into all the forms of media and I've gotten so many wild connections uh, to Spidey over my lifetime that if I made a list of them, Brian, and showed them to you, it, it'd be hard to believe that all these things happened to one person that were Spider-Man related. I don't even believe it half the time. And I know that it happened to me. So uh, it's, it's been a wild ride for 55 years of, of collecting. Uh, the last 30 or so, I've really kind of specialized in the memorabilia. Uh, I only have some of it out here uh, today. Uh, typically, th this is my game room for my family, and it's also a weight room. So typically, this area is kind of crowded up with equipment and other things. So I only put things out on the table for interviews and, and photos. But the things on the walls stay up permanently, and, and this big old pinball machine over here stays up permanently. <laughs> but uh, I just bring it out for interviews. But I was kind of discovered about two years ago, Brian, after 55 years of collecting uh, a man with the uh, Spider-Man Crawl Space website, Brad Douglas. It's one of the longest running Spider-Man websites out there. Uh, he interviewed me in 2020 and that got the ball rolling and other people interviewed me. Uh, my newspaper in town covered the stories. My television station in town, news station covered things. And, and it's just been going on and on and on. And after telling so many uh, stories, uh, I love telling my stories of connecting and collecting with Spider-Man. It just brings me a lot of joy. But about six months ago, I thought, well, you know, I enjoy doing interviews, but what else could I do with my stories? And, and the idea was finally came to me that I should go to comic book conventions and do presentations in front of live audience. So I've been doing that for about six months. I've been to about 12 different conventions uh, in those six months. And that's the latest chapter in my story of connecting and collecting with Spider-Man uh, for over 55 years. And that's why I have the website. I just started that six months ago to kind of help promote and to keep track of uh, what I'm doing at the comic book conventions. Oh, that's great. And, and so at the comic book uh, conventions, you're doing, uh, like you said, so you're presenting to a, a live audience and, and I, I'm sure answering questions and things like that. Right, exactly. I, I, I have a, 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 some images I'll show on the screen and I tell my stories and then uh, sometimes if I'll show something on the screen, I might have it with me there and I'll, and I'll say, and here it is with me today and I'll hold it up. And after the presentation, people can come up and check out the table and, and take photos or ask questions and things like that. But, but uh, the first presentation I came up with was the stories I've been telling in interviews, like the, the stories of my life. And I thought, well, maybe some promoters wouldn't want to hear about Bruce from Johnstown, Pennsylvania, <laughs> you know, just a, an average collector. So I came up with a second idea to get my foot in the door, Brian, and that idea was to talk about Steve Ditko, the co-creator of Spider-Man. And I'm connected to that guy. Another wild connection, Brian. I didn't discover it until I was collecting Spider-Man heavily for 25 years. I was almost 30 years old. And I bought a Spider-Man trading card set for his 30th anniversary. You know, that was 30 years ago because this is his 60th anniversary. And I flipped it over one of the cards. And, you know, the fun facts are on the back. And it said, Steve Ditko was born in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And that's where I've lived my life, my my entire life. I've been in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. So oh, wow. that's, I mean, I get goosebumps when I tell that story <laughs> because it's just wild to me that I, I was Spider-Man in my mind and for all those years and collecting, but no one talked about it in our, in our small town of Johnstown. I didn't know that he was born in Johnstown, but uh, you know, that's just one of the one of the connections that I have uh, with Spider-Man over the years that that I'm I'm here in. in in his hometown. So I, I just, I developed another presentation to talk about our Johnstown, Pennsylvania connections uh, to Steve Ditko and to talk about the things that we've been doing here in Johnstown to honor him the last couple of years with the blessing of his, his family members. So I've gotten to know the Ditko family members and it's like, I'm name, I'm name dropping out, Brian, yeah, I know the <laughs> Ditko, but it's, it's really a dream come true. And almost every day, Brian, I have, when I wake up, I have to think, well, did that really happen? Am I really friends with some of the nephews and nieces of, of Steve Ditko? And I have to look at my website. Did I really go to that convention? You know, did I do really? Because I'm just a collector, you know, just like the rest of us. We, you know, I love Spider-Man all my life, but all these things have intertwined into my life. And I, I keep saying to people, you know, I'm living my blessed Spidey life. 
uh, these last few years. Um, it's, it's an important part of my life, Brian, but it's not the most important part. I always tell people that, you know, my health, my faith, my family, my wife, my kids, my job, those are all very important to me, uh, much more so than the Spider-Man. But uh, the Spider-Man part of my life has also been important to me, and I love it, and I love talking about it. Uh, that's great. And that's it's so it's so strange that you wouldn't have or the connection wouldn't have been mentioned or found out earlier because of the popularity of Spider-Man, obviously throughout the years. But, you know, over the last 20 years with all of the big films and, um, you know, TV shows and things like that, that that the Ditko connection wouldn't have, you know, come up sooner. But. <laughs> yeah, well, I, like I said, I, it, it was 1992 when I finally figured it out or heard about it. So it was before, you know, the big explosion of Spider-Man, but even Spider-Man was, was still big in 1992. Oh, but, sure. Uh, but but ever since then, you know, obviously I, I, I was in awe of the fact that here I am living in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And I, I also tell people, Brian, all the time, you know, the, when they see my pictures on my website of my collection and, and my videos of interviews and things, I do not have the best collection. I, I know that by far. I know several people personally. I've seen their collections, and my jaw drops when I see what they have. Uh, but but I'm very blessed with what I have. Um, I'm thankful for what I have, and I'm thankful for what they have. And I appreciate everybody's collection, whatever size it is. But you know, I'm not the biggest and best collector. But living in Johnstown and Steve Deco's hometown, and all these personal things have happened to me. Uh, the personal connections are what makes my collection really kind of stand out, and I like talking about those. Oh, no, that's great. And I mean, I think, you know, you think about, you know, like you said, 60 years of Spider-Man and the the amount of things, uh, merchandise that he's been part of, you know, over the years. You know, I can think of it, some of the things that I've had as a kid uh, and even growing up, you know, there's just, there's so many different things that you can collect, you know, outside of comic books, just all of the different toys right. and, you know, merchandise, uh, clothing. There's just so many different things. So there are so many different and and w when brad douglas from the spider-man crawl space website interviewed me we hit it off so well we talked for about two hours on the first live video and we were like reading each other's minds it was it, it's it almost like we had a script and we didn't have a script <laughs> but if you everybody anybody ever goes back and watches that first one from 2020 we hit it off so well that he asked me to write articles for his website now so every so often i write articles about a certain part of collecting the memorabilia of spider-man and he called the, the article Spidey Stash. And I've done about seven different episodes. But like you said, one episode was about posters, only about posters. And then the, another episode was only about school items like that you could take to school with you or uh, Halloween costumes. But there's so many genres that I'm going to be writing articles for the, <laughs> how, many, how many years to come. I mean, I, I don't even do one once a month. So I still got a lot of material out there. But you're right. You know, I fell in love with collecting the memorabilia, especially around 1991, 92, when I finally got you know, a nice paying job and had some, some adult money to, to go back and, and get some things that, that I didn't keep from my youth. But I kept a lot of things, Brian, I'm kind of like a, a pack rat, you know, I, I kept almost everything and I'm sure we'll see some of that here tonight when we talk later. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had stuff over the years, but unfortunately I have not, I have not done a good job of keeping uh, a, a bunch of the toys and things that I owned as a kid. So, um, but yeah, it, it's unfortunate that, you know, Peter Parker never got a little bit of cut of that uh, merchandise money. Maybe that could have helped him out throughout the years with yeah, he, I mean, know, I, paying I was, rent. He was hard, hard luck Parker. Yeah, he always had the chance to to try to cash in on things, but I, I can't cash a check made out to Spider-Man. So, yeah, poor Parker couldn't couldn't cash in on those kind of things. But I, I'm also a little bit of a different kind of a collector, Brian. Uh, some of the things that are most emotionally connected to me, I, I will never sell. But I've sold quite a few things. So I'm a, I'm a collector that also buys, sells, and trades. And in fact, one, one year right before I got married, I sold about 400 items, Spider-Man items, to one person. Uh, and I, I wasn't displaying them at the time. And I was getting ready to, to move out of my house and get married to my wife. She was finishing her college. And I thought, well, let's get rid of these. Let's use the money for something better. And over the years, I've got some of them back, you know, when I see them from different places. But, but I'm a collector... Of, some of this uh, that you see tonight might be available for sale. Some of it might not, but I'm always looking to to buy, sell, and trade, and and keep going with the hobby. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. So you mentioned you said you you first kind of discovered Spider-Man when you were three. So what was the initial you know introduction and connection that you made with with the character? Well, Brian, just like every superhero, they have to have a good origin if they're going to stick around for 
55 years like I have. So my origin story was uh, the original Spider-Man cartoon show. And I, I'm the youngest of four siblings. And my siblings, one of them yelled, hey, Bruce, come over here. There's a Spider-Man cartoon on TV. And I'm like, Spider-Man, what the heck is that? I knew about Superman and Batman. You know, the Batman TV show with Adam West was on TV. And we knew about those guys. So I went over and I saw the beautiful cartoon uh, from the 60s with the, with the wonderful theme song. And this is a picture uh, from that TV uh, cartoon. And the man who played the role of Peter Parker, the, the voice actor, Paul Souls, he signed this picture. And I, and I, I, I treasure this picture. But So I, I started watching this cartoon. And I thought, wow, this is a kind of cool character. You know, he, he's climbing up walls. He's spinning webs. He's, he's swinging. And so I kind of just fell in love with it. And then I got to know the character a little bit more. And I fell even more in love with it. So at an early age, you know, I was the youngest kid at the house. This was the newest superhero. This was going to be my superhero because my brothers, you know, they loved Batman and Superman. And so did mm. I. But they kind of laid claim to those guys. But So Spider-Man was going to be my, my guy. And that's how it started. And uh, shortly after that, my brother uh, came home from the corner store. We had a lot of corner stores in our neighborhood back in the day where you could buy milk and bread and comic books. And he came home and threw a Spider-Man comic book on the table in front of me and said, I got something for you. And I, we had comics already. We had Spider or Superman and Batman and even the Archies. But I never saw a Spider-Man comic right. book. So as soon as I saw that, I'm like, wow, I want more of these. Even though I can't read, I want more of these Spider-Man <laughs> comic books. And uh What's kind of cool, and then shortly after that, you know, I probably got some toys and things, and I even had the first uh, toy that I received as a child. Uh, I threw it away at one point, but I, I bought it again on eBay this past year. So, uh, in addition to having the first item, that first memorabilia piece, I take this to the shows with me as well. And later on, I'm going to come around front and bring the camera closer for some of these things up up close. But this is my first Spider-Man comic book, uh, right here. And oh wow, okay. When I was a kid, I wrote all over the cover. In fact, on the first page, there's a picture of, of Peter Parker sitting on his bed with his Spider-Man uh, shirt off, his costume shirt off. And I wrote my name on his back because I was Spider-Man. So I put Bruce <laughs> on his back. And so I signed it way back then. And then I got uh, Stan Lee and John Romita have signed this too. And I'll, I'll bring it up closer. But uh, I'm just thankful that I kept this. And they were probably wondering why they're, they're signing this tattered up item when I <laughs> threw it on the table with, at the <laughs> signing shows. In fact, my mom, my mom probably used it as a... Uh, place to set her coffee mug because there's, <laughs> oh, there's, there's a coffee ring in the middle it's really light but but uh this is this is a treasure uh from my childhood that that uh, i'm so thankful to still have it and i take it to the shows and people can check it out but i cut pictures out of this brian and i put them on my wall you know tape them up right away so this is a well uh loved and well tattered issue but it was my first one that i got when i was almost turning five so it was when i was four pretty close to turning five years old so I still got my first Spidey comic. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. There's something special about a book that, you know, you purchased yourself or, you know, or was given, you know, by a family member, you know, to yeah. have that original book that came from the, you know, the convenience store, the local store. That's, that's, that's great. And, and recently, Brian, I, I don't know, you know, maybe I obsess about Spider-Man a little bit, just a little, a little bit. But, <laughs> uh, I was looking at some of the books. You know, I, I, when I see that on eBay, I, I have one in nice condition too, like you know, really high grade, but, I saw one on eBay and it had the date stamp, you know, kind of confirming yes. like when I, when I would have got it from my brother, you know, at the store. So now Brian, I'm chasing after date stamps on comics, you know, so it's like collecting never ends. You know, there's always something out there that kind of sparks my interest again. So I got that one with the date stamp on it. I got the second issue I ever got with a date stamp on it. I'm not going to go crazy and get all the issues that I ever bought Brian with date stamps on it, but uh, that's just another, another cool aspect of collecting now that, kind of confirming that, you know, he got it for me at that certain month of my right. life. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I have a, uh, so amazing Spider-Man 80, uh, is my birthday book. So published the, uh, you know, month and year that I was born and it's, it's not a particular, you know, key issue or, um, you know, expensive book, but it's a special book to have a book that is, you know, that was produced the same month that I was, uh, right. month and year right. that I was. So it's one of, it's probably the most special book in my, in my collection that, you know, to have that birthday book. Yeah, it's cool. And I know a lot of people who do that, Brian, that try to collect their birthday books. So that's awesome that you got yours. So 
what was it about Spider-Man, you know, that, that you really, you know, got that connected you, you know, to the character? I mean, for me, I grew up on Long Island. So I was like two counties over from Queens County. Yeah. So yeah. You know, as a young kid, I thought I could just go, you know, my dad could drive me into Queens and maybe we could see Spider-Man or if we were in New York City, you know, maybe I could see him swinging around. And so that was like, at a very young age, that was my early connection to him, knowing that, you know, he lived locally and maybe I could go see him. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I, you know, I always dreamed of being in New York you know, as a kid and doing the same kind of thing, trying to see if I could find like the real neighborhood where, you know, they, they based it upon uh, as a child. But um, there's a couple of things, Brian, that, that kind of connected me. But I think as a kid, before I knew like the backstory, which I fell in love with as a, as a younger you know, child at, you know, elementary school age and, and so forth, when I, when I kind of could understand the story of how he was acting out his responsibility, you know, after kind of blowing it and messing up and Uncle Ben, you know, dying because he didn't right. stop someone, you know, it, it just, you know, all those Marvel characters in the 60s, they were all created with problems and issues. And Spider-Man was the youngest superhero. He was a teenager. And, and so I fell in love with that story. But originally, um, and this is kind of strange, so this, this story's come up a couple of times with, with other people just out of the blue. Um, there's a lot of people that believe it's it's the color combination and that costume that Steve Ditko created mm -hmm. that really just draws kids in. You know, it's just it's just wild. I mean, I, I, I cosplay. Uh, I've, I've been wearing Spider-Man costumes for about 20 years here in Johnstown only. And I'm known as Johnstown Spider-Man. I do different events and things. But about a year ago, right before I started doing my presentations, I went to a convention for the first time in costume. And uh, I have a Steve Ditko version costume because we've done some events here in Johnstown in the last couple of years. So my most recent is Steve Ditko. So, and this is the, ma the mask from it. But uh, at an event recently, they, they asked me to be a cosplay uh, personality. And I've never done that before. I've, I've gone, you know, and done my presentations, but they wanted just a whole bunch of cosplayers to kind of do a pre-Halloween party for kids in, in a collectible store near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I went and I knew one of the women there was really professional and she does like 45 different costumes. I do one, I do a Spider-Man. Right. I've seen her at other shows and, and I follow her on, on social media and she's the nicest person. Her She goes by Samurai Jill. That's her cosplay name, Samurai Jill. And she's a total pro. And she was right next to me. And there were some other people from the Pittsburgh area uh, that were in different costumes. And, and she and I, you know, I was asking her questions. I was bugging her all day, like giving me advice, how to be a cosplayer and, 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 and things like that. And, and, at one point, I turned around to look at my table, and a child came running into the room and screamed at the top of their lungs, Spider-Man, and almost knocked me over. And after I got done talking to the, to the boy, uh, we, I got a chance to talk to Jill again, and she said, you know, it's always the same. It's always Spider-Man. You know, it's always, you know, and, and, she, and we talked about the costume colors and the combinations that just excite kids to see, you know, you can see this giant poster in the background here. To see that costume, you know, it just... It just knocks you out as a kid, you know, all the, the spidery aspects, the mystery, it's all totally covered. But uh, so, so sorry for the long answer to that short question, Brian, but, <laughs> but there's so much, so much that can attract people to Spider-Man as a kid or as a preteen, teenager, adult, you know, it, it's just so much good with Spidey. Yeah. That's, you know, I never really considered that, that, you know, the, the red and the blue and blue, blue just happens to be my favorite color. Um, but yeah, you know, I never really considered just the, just the aesthetic look of Spider-Man being the, that initial, you know, initial attraction. I think, you know, as you get older, as you get in, maybe in middle school, your teenage years, you know, his down on his luck and the, you know, the troubles that he has, you know, socializing and things like that. I think that's an instant connection because there's so many kids that go through that in, you know, in those teenage years. So, um, you know, yeah. that is the connection I, I normally hear from people, but that's a great, you know, I wonder if that was my initial connection to him because I, like you, I, you know, I, I think my first superhero was probably Batman, you know, the Adam West Batman. Yeah. And then when I discovered Spider-Man, it was like, you know, the switch went off, like he's my guy. Um, yeah. So That's, yeah. You and I are on the same path there, Brian, but yeah, it, it, there's so many things that could attract you. And, and obviously, you know, the, the backstory is, is the heart of Spider-Man and it's why it's persisted for 60 years, but, but Steve Ditko, I'll, I'll put this iconic costume up against any other hero and say, this is the best. I mean, I'm, I'm biased, but you know, <laughs> I think that's the most iconic costume that's ever been created. Yeah, definitely. You know, not, not, like I said, now that you've said it, I, I, you know, it pops right. The blue, the blue and the red and the, 
you know, like you said, the webbing, the the spider web. So yeah, yeah, no, that makes I I can see that for a young mm-hmm. young child that where they would instantly make that connection. Yes. So so what do you think about you know now over the last you know ten twelve years there's been a, a a pretty big introduction of other spider characters you know Miles Morales you know Spider Man you know Spider Gwen and and you know basically a, a really extended universe of spider characters now so so what do you think of you know all of these new characters that have um, you know popped up over the last you know ten years or so that's a good question and some people have asked me that recently too um, well you know. Brian, you and I are a little, a little bit older than, than maybe some of these guys that are just jumping into the hobby, but I still remember Peter Porker back in the 1980s. Yeah, so Peter Porker actually started in 1980. I remember getting a couple issues of that one, but uh, I think it's a good thing for especially new people to attract them, uh, younger people. Uh, some of the comic books these days just aren't attracting the younger people, and, that, and that's where you and I got probably drawn into it was the comic books. You know, we, we love the stories of the comics, and a lot of young people just aren't reading the comics anymore. So I think the Miles Morales, the, the Spider Gwen, and all the other characters are a good way to attract new people. Um, being an older guy, you know, I, I, I kind of just prefer Peter Parker. I prefer one Spider-Man, you know, <laughs> keep, keep it simple. But I do enjoy, you know, I, I, don't buy the com- I, I don't buy many comics anymore. I buy Amazing Spider-Man because I started that with issue 99, uh, getting it steadily. That first one I had there was issue 71. But from issue 99 till now, I've gotten every Amazing Spider-Man issue that came out as a current issue, mm. but I, I've so I got a pretty good streak going there, Brian. And I'm not going to yeah. stop it anytime soon, but <laughs> but but uh, I can appreciate any kind of character that they want to develop because, as we know, it's hard to keep stories exciting and fresh. You know, a character's been around 60 years, <clears throat> even in the first 20 years, it's hard to keep the stories exciting and fresh. So uh, I'm in favor. <clears throat> excuse me of of the new characters, especially for newer people. Yeah, no, it makes sense. I think, you know, the newer, newer generation of, you know, whether it's reader, comic book readers or, you know, movie goers or, you know, video game players, you know, I think Miles Morales has now, um, you know, th- th- there's a generation of kids that are growing up with, you know, Miles Morales as their Spider-Man, which, which I think is a good thing because it continues to keep the, you know, the character and the, um, you know, legacy of, of Spider-Man going. So um, yeah, I totally agree. And, and I've, I've kind of fallen back in love with comic books about the last month and a half, Brian, some of the guys I follow on Instagram, they do like live sales and I hadn't really been buying many comics because the ones I need are so expensive. And so, you know, older oh, yeah. comics that I can't afford it as a high school math teacher here in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, but, but some of the ones they have like, you know, are, are decently priced. I've been buying comics and falling in love with them again, but I've kind of just re-educated myself as some of the values and some of those Miles Morales early appearances are, are very, very valuable right now because people love them. They, they love Miles and the comics go up because people love them. So, right. Yeah. The popularity. Yeah. 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 I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually collecting Miles as well. I, I collect them. I basically collect all things, all thing comic book related. Um, but I am, I'm working on, I think I have two or three more issues and I have all of the all of the Miles Morales books, so nice. Um, it was kind of a recent goal of trying to collect those before, you know, he potentially shows up in a, a live action movie, and the values really go kind of crazy. So yeah, you know, that's, that's that's what's happening, as you know. <laughs> as soon as the movie hits or a TV show, you know, you better find your comics, you know, in someone's attic or something like that, because right. you're not going to be able to afford them anywhere else. <laughs> but I, I have another collecting, it's, and it's cool to meet so many people through collecting. That's one of the blessings, uh, Brian, over the years. Like I've met guys 30 years ago, then we still communicate to this day. Uh, I have a, a great friend in Canada, Sal Choka. Uh, we've gone on buying trips back in the 90s. You know, I have friends in Ohio. Uh, Cy Winnie has the greatest Spider-Man collection in the world and, and other friends. And, and one of my friends, you mentioned about the comics, uh, his name's Aaron Ho- Hoke, H-O-C-H. And he, he, he's collected every variant of every Spider-Man issue. And he, he's got the most complete Spider-Man collection oh, wow. that I've heard of. I mean, every variant cover, you know, he, it's just amazing what people can do. And, you know, every kind of collector to me deserves my respect and they have my respect. Yeah. And, you know, that was the one thing when I, when I first started collecting books, I started collecting in the, in the eighties, what was nice about the collecting back then was there were 12 issues a year and an annual. It was basically, yep. you know, 13 issues a year, you know, and today, yep. 
And I took a, I took a break for, uh, I don't know, probably almost 25 years where I wasn't collecting and reading. And then I recently have come back and, you know, uh, graded comic books and the amount of uh, variant covers that are available for, you know, some books is, is, it's just, it's, it's more difficult and more expensive to collect today than it was, you know, in, a, in, in the eighties when it was just, like I said, just very simple to, you know, collect. Yeah, for sure. And, and I'm even learning now that even in the eighties, Brian, when, when you and I were heavily collecting and I, I started going to my first official comic shop, like dedicated comic shop in 1983, we didn't have one in Johnstown <clears throat> until 1983. I was already in my first year of college. But I, there are even slight variants, you know, the newsstand copy versus the direct copy. Oh, right. You right, know, yeah. and, and even more recently, I've been educating myself about the Mark Jeweler editions. Oh, yes. Yeah, you yeah. know, with the with the inserts the insert. that are almost like cardboard where you can buy jewelry in, in certain parts of the country. Those are available, especially for military. Uh, people right. Military order. bases. Yeah. <clears throat> so even even when you think about it, there, there were kind of a few more variants that that we weren't really even caring about in the 1980s. But right. but, but now they're like. They're out there, right? So you mentioned it, you know. So you're you're a a teacher. Uh, have you ever worked in your you know love for Spider Man into any of your you know uh, teachings to to your students? No, I keep it hidden, Brian. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I I try to have fun in 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 class as much as I can. I teach high school grades, mathematics, and I try to have fun and uh, I wear spider-man ties a lot so i have about 25 different spider-man ties so i wear those i have a couple spider-man things on my walls in my room and it's it's hard to really you know bring spider-man into the, the mathematical teachings but but they know of my hobbies they know of my passion uh they know i've been going to these conventions so every monday when i go back to school there's at least four or five kids in, in different periods of the day that say hey which convention did you go to this week where did you go this time did you oh you were absent yesterday you're probably at a spider-man thing no they if I'm absent during the week, I'm sick, you know, or I'm taking care of something else. But you know, they're only on the weekends when I, when I'm not working, and so they do have an interest in in keeping up with me. And you know, they've seen some of the news stories locally in the newspaper or on TV or or, or things like that. So uh, I've I've played a game with them, Brian, over the years. That uh, before I got really into the media the last few years, uh, that I was not Johnstown Spider-Man. That I was not the guy that would go to birthday parties or different events, and it wasn't me. And they pretty much knew that it was, but we played this little, I play this little game with them and I had a Photoshopped image of me standing with Spidey one time. So, <laughs> but, so we play, they play along pretty well, but, but uh, they, they, yeah, they, they know very well of my passion for Spider-Man. Wow. Oh, that's great. So, you, and I was, that's kind of a segue into my next question is how did you, you know, make the leap into the saying, all right, now I'm going to put on the Spider-Man costume and, and I'm going to go out, you know, in public, you know, as Spider-Man. <laughs> it, it sounds so strange when you say it that way, Brian. <laughs> I, I guess it is, you know, a grown man in a spidey suit. But um, what happened was I went to the Universal Islands of Adventure in Florida. Mm, okay. Uh, you, you know, with, with the, of course, the best ride of all time, the Spider-Man ride. Oh, yeah. Have, have been you been on, on, you've been on it several times, Brian? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So so I went there in 2001 before my wife and I were going to start having kids. We kind of treated ourselves to our like last vacation together. And I we went to the, you know, to Universal. And her uh, cousin lives in Florida, so she came with us and kind of was a tour guide. And I said, you know, I have my new video camera with me. Uh, I'm going to stay here in the Marvel Island of Adventure. You guys can go all around. <laughs> and I, I filmed every square inch of that place, Brian. And, and I saw people in costumes. You know, they had a little parade. You know, they had Doctor Doom. They had Spider-Man, Captain America. And I thought, hey, that's cool. Those costumes look pretty good. You know, at the time, I, I didn't know anywhere you could really get a good costume. So... A year later, of course, the Spider-Man movie was coming out, the first one. And I thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun just to get a nice costume, go to the movie, sit there and watch it and pretend like I didn't even have it on. <laughs> so that was my goal. And I found one. I was real. I'm pretty picky about Spider-Man, Brian. You know, can you imagine I'm picky about Spider-Man? But uh, I kept looking on eBay, couldn't find one. The webs would be, you know, something was wrong with it. It just wasn't good. And about a week before the movie, I went to the Pittsburgh Comic Con. And there was a, a local person to Pittsburgh that was creating costumes and he had a Spider-Man and it was the only one he had. He wanted to wear it to his premiere in his town and I wanted to wear it to my town. So a couple hundred dollars more uh, from the asking price, it came with me to Johnstown and I wore it to the theater. 
and it was a noon showing that was, back then they didn't have like midnight showing it was a noon showing on a friday and there was hardly anybody in the theater but the theater owner saw me and he said hey will you come back tonight and kind of just mill around you know in my lobby when the crowds are here and oh. you know i'll comp you some movie tickets and things like that and i said yeah i'll come up there and I'll do that for you so while i was doing that someone said hey do you do birthday parties and i said no i don't yet but i'm not against <laughs> it so i started doing birthday parties and it just went on from there and now 21 years later i'm probably on my eighth or ninth costume uh over the years like i want a better one or it starts to break down a little bit so that's how that all got started then that's the history of Johnstown Spider-Man. Wow, that's great. That's great. And, and I'm sure it's got to be rewarding, too, to see, like you said, you know, seeing a, a, a young fan come up and, and you know, think you're Spider-Man, that you're Peter Parker and, you know, the excitement that they have for, you know, for the character and, you know, for seeing you in person. That's Those are the best times, uh, Brian. And, and this fall, that day that I told you I was at that, that shop in Pittsburgh, well, that was probably the longest that I've ever worn a costume because later that day, I went from Pittsburgh back here to Johnstown, uh, right outside of Johnstown. It's about a two-hour drive. And I was at a, an event for autistic children. Uh, they were having a Halloween party, and they asked me to come. And, and that was very rewarding uh, just to, to hang out with them and, and to enjoy them and let them enjoy me. And it, it's always awesome uh, to, to see a, a child's face light up. You, you wouldn't believe <laughs> – if I, I should have kept track, Brian, of all the different – wild questions they've asked me over the years like, like for example one year somebody some kid asked me if i had pets they want to know if spider-man had pets so you know there's all kind of questions out there but you know thankfully i am the walking encyclopedia of spider-man i can answer uh, the questions that they have and and yeah, i really enjoy it you know every, every time i go someplace i i pray like on my way there that that i could just be the best spider-man possible for the kids or the people or the adults that i'm going to entertain that day Right. Yeah, that no, that's great. I mean, I think two two of my um you know, most vivid memories were, were with Spider-Man as a kid. Uh my mom took me to to breakfast with Spider-Man at a JC Penney's of all places. We had pancakes and got to hang out with Spider-Man and I won a I won a Spider-Man Amazing Spider-Man poster during that and he signed it for me. And cool. then when I was a little bit older, my dad took me to a Play World so Play World was like a, I'm not sure if you had them in Pennsylvania, but they were like a competitor to Toys R Us. And right. um, Spider-Man was there with the with the Green Goblin. And, you know, the before they came out for their little show, I think they were promoting a toy, a new toy. Um, one, the promoter came up to me and said, hey, would you mind letting Spider-Man know that the Green, you know, to watch out for the Green Goblin? And I said, cool. I said, no, I, I he, he's going to know you know, based on his spider sense, I don't need to yell and warn him of the Green Goblin. Right. And so I kind of blew up her plan. Yeah. <laughs> and you missed but, your chance there, but that's that's really cool. But do you still have that poster, Brian? I don't. Unfortunately, it was a poster that I, I don't know what I did with over the years, um, but it hung on my wall for, you know, probably 10 or 15 years, you know, in my, in my uh, yeah. childhood bedroom. Um, but I don't know what I ultimately did with it. I really wish, um, you know, it was the classic, you know, amazing Spider-Man white background, similar to the, you know, the, the, the one you have behind you. Um, so yeah, I really, I, I don't know what I did with it, but. <laughs> yeah, cool. Well, if you ever remember the, the image of it, I'm going to things closer to the camera too. You might, might see it here today, but I'd, I'd be interested to, to find out what the, the image was. I went to see Spidey at a local mall myself in 1977 i was 13 and i was kind of one of the older kids but i still have the paper i don't have it out with me today but they gave you a printed paper that said i met spider-man at pen traffic was the name of the department store i met spider-man at pen traffic and had the date on it so it was always cool to have a chance to meet spidey but when i come to think of it brian i've told people this story 1977 was the last time i saw a spider-man in, in a nice costume in johnstown until about 24 years 25 years later when I, when I went 2002 to the movie and, and started doing it myself. So I kind of get goosebumps about that, that, you know, I, I and other kids were excited to see Spider-Man in 1977. Now I can help kids to be excited about seeing me in the costume, you know, these days. Oh yeah. No, that's great. That's cool. So, um, 
what about so so when did you so you initially do this you know spider man in costume as spider man at the movies and then that kind of you know uh rolls into birthday parties and things like that and so then when did you make the leap to say all right now i'm going to go to you know a comic con or a comic convention you know dressed as spidey i i wasn't real comfortable doing it i i hadn't been to conventions for a while because i had young kids and just didn't have the time to go to conventions but so I wasn't sure what was really going on at these conventions. And, and I was kind of like, you know, reluctant to do it. You know, you're in spandex, you know, and it's hard to see out of these masks, you know, the spider oh, yeah. masks. And, <laughs> and if you don't have like a, a manager or a handler or something like that, you're, you're pretty much on your own. You got to use your spider senses to warn you of things from time to time. <laughs> so I wasn't really sure if I should. And then uh, I just thought, well, I was, I was free in April this past April. And, and there's a, uh, a convention that comes about three or four times a year called steel city con it's mainly for celebrities but i know a lot of people cosplay so i thought oh, i'm going to test out cosplay and so i walked around it was really crowded that day because they had chevy chase and some other really big name celebrities there and, but people were taking pictures and i had a good time and you know about three weeks after that is when i came up with the idea of going to conventions to do presentations so it's just like a cool add-on you know while i'm doing presentations after the presentation i could throw in the costume i can entertain people or I can have a table uh, of merchandise. If, if the promoter is nice enough to give me a free table, I'll take some merchandise and try to, to sell those uh, pieces to, to kind of help out with the gas gas money for getting to the shows <laughs> uh, and things like that. So it just kind of, you know, I was reluctant to do it because I didn't really know. Uh, and I've had a pleasant, you know, reaction and pleasant experiences doing cosplay these past six months. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I've been to, you know, several cons. I, I've been to New York City Comic Con, you know, one of probably one of the biggest, biggest ones. And, um, you know, the, the cosplay, the amount of people cosplaying, it just seems to always increase. Uh, and people are very generally, you know, the, the collecting community is very um, well behaved, you know, with the, with uh, cosplayers. Yep. And, you know, cosplayers are very, you know, open to taking pictures. And so it's just it's a nice, um, you know, balance between you know, fans and cos cosplayers. So that's, that's, you know, great that you've had, you know, some good experiences. Yeah. Very good experiences. And I'm, I'm looking forward to doing it more and more. And e even for that one event uh, where I was just going to be a cosplay guy, I uh, printed out some eight by tens because I know that some of the pros do that, the cosplayers. Right. right. And I had so a variety of eight by tens uh, of myself in costume and only two kids bought photos, which was not a big deal, but <clears throat> one at the beginning of the day, one at the end of the day, and out of the 12 different poses that I had, they both picked the same picture. So I thought oh, that was wow. kind of wild that both, both kids picked the same picture hours apart from each other. And that was the only one that sold that day. But <laughs> so another, another fun experience. All right. So what is your, what is your kids and your wife? What, what do they, what do they think of it? Are they Spider-Man fans as well? I mean, I guess they must be living with you, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they, Brian, they, they've been indoctrinated, so they, they can't, they can't avoid it. They, they really can't avoid it. Uh, but what's kind of cool is, uh, yeah, my, my daughter, as a two-year-old, she could recite all the lines from the second Spider-Man movie with Doc Ock and Toby. Oh, even wow. when the movie was off, like she didn't even words she didn't know, she could recite recite like different characters, and <laughs> so you know she loved watching it so much. And uh, now she's twenty. Uh, she normally runs a camera for me. That's why it's a static camera tonight. But she usually runs her cell phone. But she's back at college now. But uh, she, you know, said, so, and she's still a big Spider-Man fan. In fact, recently uh, she got her first tattoo, and it's a Spidey. So she, she got oh, a tattoo, wow, okay. a Spidey. And uh, so she's still, she, and she asked for a Spidey themed birthday party just a couple of days ago. So she's still into Spidey pretty big. Uh, my son, you know, he, he grew up wearing costumes all the time. Like I did, you know, I, I would wear my Spider-Man costume all year long, just not, not at Halloween, but, uh, and now he's, he's six foot four. I'm about five, nine. And he's a high school senior and he's a really good pitcher baseball. He's, he's good at a lot of things, but, but, uh, Two years ago, when I was discovered and started getting those interviews done on YouTube, his friends saw some of them. And so they started calling him Spidey on the team. And his team <laughs> colors are red and blue uh, where oh, he goes okay. to high school. Well, he didn't like that the first couple of weeks because they were kind of like teasing him with it. And then when he was doing really well, they were doing it in a positive way. Now he's known as Spidey at his high school. And when they're pl playing their rivals across town, those guys know. And, and when he's pitching, they try to get on him and, and distract him by yelling Spidey and get on his nerves. So when he strikes the first guy out, he turns to their bench and he starts shooting the webs at, at the players <laughs> on the bench. So, so uh, they're, 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 they're very supportive of what I do. Uh, my wife, as a child, she got a giant Spider-Man floor puzzle and she's an identical twin. 
And usually they both got the same gifts. So they wouldn't fight over it. Well, this is one of the rare gifts that she got just as her, as for her own. So I knew about it and she uh, had it in our collection, like used and things. And this year for Christmas, I found one sealed from 1977 and oh, I gave wow. it to her as a Christmas present. So, so, you know, that was kind of cool that I could give her one that almost like Tim Allen does on, on the Santa Claus movie where he gives the adults, you know, their, their childhood yeah, right, gifts. Right. But uh, her, her sister was visiting for the holidays and her sister said, I never even saw that puzzle when we were kids. And my wife said, yeah, because I hid it under my bed. They didn't want you to have it because it was mine. <laughs> so she, she uh, had a, you know, an encounter with Spider-Man well before we ever met and, you know, very supportive of my hobby. Uh, in fact, uh, I sold my first ever item uh, way back in 1997 and it, it, I got a second version of it. And I'm going to show it to you here and I'll bring it up closer later on. Maybe but it's a, it's a ceramic ashtray. And it has image of Spider-Man by John Romita. And I didn't know what I had back then. And eBay had just started out and they weren't on eBay. So I, I didn't know if I bought something that was good, bad, but I bought it on the street, uh, you know, in a local, like they bring in like, vendors to, to sell for a weekend. And it was the only Spider-Man item I could see out of all these antiques. So I bought it for about $45 and someone found out what they really were. They, those were employee gifts at Marvel Comics for like a holiday party. Oh, so wow. they were only, only intended for Marvel Comics employees. And somebody had got one on a, on a big phone in auction just a couple months before it was a human torch uh, from the year before that. And so that, that person heard that I had, and he called me up, he offered me all this money and I ended up selling it and using that money to buy the engagement ring for my wife. Oh, wow. So, so I, when I tell the story to the audiences at, at the convention, some of them are like, Oh, that's so great. And I'm like, wait, 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 maybe it's great. Or maybe I'm just cheap. I just, I just paid $45 for a $2,500 uh, engagement ring. But, uh, but I got another one a couple of years later for a lot less than, than 2,500. And so it, this is like a keepsake to, to remind me of, you know, how my wife is connected to my collecting and, and the good things that Spidey has brought to us as well. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So it, it sounds like it's a family affair, right? Everybody, yeah. everybody has their connection in different ways to, to Spider-Man, whether, you know, your son and your daughter through you, but your wife, you know, independently before you, you know, before you guys met or knew each yep. other. That's great. Yep. So it was meant to be, Brian, it was just meant to be. It, it, it sounds like it. <laughs> so Bruce, that was it. That, those are all of the questions that I had. Um, anything else that you, you know, want to mention? I know we want to maybe show off some of the, the stuff that you have there, but you know, anything else that you'd like to, to mention about yourself? Yeah, I'll, I'll show a couple of things. I'll come up front there and just show a couple of things. But, um, other, the other thing is, like I told you about the Ditko events we've been doing in Johnstown uh, yes. with the cooperation of his family and with the blessing of the Ditko family. Um, it's been organized through a place called the Bottle Works Ethnic Art Center here in Johnstown. Matt Lamb is their creative director, and he's been the one that's been connected with the family. And we had a two-month exhibit at their art center uh, in the summer of 2021. And then we had a, a, a Ditko con, a mini con for one day <clears throat> at the end of that. And then we put up a giant mural this summer and it's the only outdoor artwork in the whole world that Marvel has ever approved. Oh, so wow. uh, Mr. Matt Lamb had to ask 38 times until they finally said yes. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a, I'll show you a picture over here. I'm going to bring it up close, <clears throat> but, but we we're doing these things to, to just bring honor to Steve Ditko. Uh, he had a 60 year career, Brian. Spider-Man was only about four years at the most of that career. But he did so many other things after Spider-Man, before Spider-Man. But, of course, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, which he created on his own. Now, uh, he did that. He came up with Doctor Strange on his own. Even Stan Lee admits it. You know, there's 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 proof of it in comic book uh, uh, fanzines and things where he said, this is all Steve's idea. We're, we're not sure how it's going to go. We're going to give him a chance with this Doctor Strange guy. But uh, we wanted to honor him and also let people in Johnstown know that Steve Ditko was from Johnstown. I, I, I'm going on, on the the hills to yell at Brian and going to these right, events right. and say, hey, Steve Ditko from Johnstown. And he was a super creative guy. But I'm going to show you this, uh, this mural. I have a picture of it here. I'll come around front and bring some things closer to the camera. So, and while I'm doing that, Brian, uh, one of my uh, childhood dreams never came true. I wanted to have a comic a letter, a letter to the uh, comic book published in the comics. And that never happened, Brian. I tried one once when I was seven years old. But recently, I tried again this summer, and my letter got published in this issue. 
Yes, I saw that. I saw it on, I, I think it's up on your uh, website as well, yep. right? I, think so, I, was, I, I flipped through that and saw that. Yeah, that is great. Yeah, 50 years later, I tried it one more time and it worked this time. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's but great. Here, here's the uh, giant mural in Johnstown. It's 38 feet tall. Oh, wow. I'm trying to tilt it so you don't get, get your glare on it. 38 feet tall. And you can see there's a lot of Spider-Man over here. There's a billboard that says, you know, Steve Ditko is from Johnstown. It's his hometown. And That's you got great. Dr. Dr. Strange over here. And there's some little character of a guy standing there uh, in a Spidey <laughs> costume. So, I don't know. He looks like a Secret Wars action figure from the 80s. <laughs> but uh, so if people want to come to Johnstown and visit this mural, this is a really cool thing. It's, it's 38 feet high, the entire side of a building in downtown Johnstown. That's the Steve Ditko mural here in Johnstown. Wow, that's and great. The only interaction I ever had with, with Steve himself, Brian, I sent him a letter in uh, 2015, and I got a reply. So he was really good with, with writing back to his fans. And here's my Steve Ditko letter. I'll bring it in a little closer so you can see. But handwritten reply. And at the end, of course, he puts his signature there at the bottom. Oh, wow. And, and he signs it. Like, this is like a professional business style letter that, and he sent out thousands and thousands of these, Brian, basically anybody who wrote to him, he replied, even if, if he didn't like what you were asking him, I, I, never, <laughs> I didn't ask him, I didn't ask him a question. I, I, I knew better than to ask him a question. I just told him how much everything meant to me in my life uh, of collecting uh, and, and how much Spider-Man meant to me, but I knew better than to ask him a question. So, uh, but he, he, re he replied to so many, so many different people over the years. It, it's amazing. Yeah, and a handwritten a handwritten letter is a you know kind of a lost art these days, right? It's yeah, for an sure. Email or <laughs> so that's great. And what I have here, Brian, is uh, this model kit I got recently. It's it's sealed. It's a 1966 Aurora Spider Man. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's I remember good. Aurora the Aurora model kits as a kid. Yeah. Yeah, they they reissued this one in 1974. They called them the comic scenes. Okay, and they, and they had a John Romita comic in there, as and in that comic was also the instructions on how to build the model. Oh, okay, but, uh, I've had this loose before, but I, I I missed out on it. My my brother was a really good model builder, and he he was older than me, and he took me to the model shop because he saw the Spider Man for sale, and when the day we got there, it was sold out. So I missed out on it, but fifty five years later, I, I mission accomplished. Mission accomplishment. This is one of the set the ones from nineteen seventy four that. It took me about seven tries to make it look good. So I bought about seven of these as, as, a, as a 10 year old because I was terrible at painting and gluing and all that stuff. And my brother was really good at it. But so there's that one. Let me ask you a question too, Brian. Have you ever uh, heard of the, uh, the Marvel No Prize? No, I don't think I have. You, you never heard of Marvel No Prizes? Well, back in the uh, six, late 60s, early 70s, Stan Lee supposedly came up with the idea that if you could write in and tell Marvel how they made a mistake in a comic book, but explain how it wasn't a mistake to get them off the hook, that you would consider yourself no prized. So people thought it was just an honorary title and they didn't know what it was for sure. There's still a lot of major collectors out there, Brian, that don't think it's really an object. Well, in the seventies, I was a kid and I was the walking encyclopedia of Spider-Man, as I said, and in one issue, when, when he met uh, Dr. Strange, they asked a question at the bottom of one of the panels. They said, if you wonder where they, they know each other, how they know each other, they've met before. And it said, a no prize if you remember when, because we don't. And it was signed by Stan. So I don't know if Stan really did it, but obviously it was a joke. But I was seven years old at the time. I took that very seriously as a challenge, Brian, as <laughs> a trivia question. So I wrote in and I told him where they met before. Didn't think anything about it. And a few weeks later, something arrived in the mail. And right here in this frame is an official Marvel Comics No Prize. So take a look at that. Oh, wow. And there's the comic book in the panel. I, I kind of, you know, enlarged the panel. Right, right. But, and I took this to John Romita's home in 2019. And he signed it. But uh, I got this. I was so excited. I tore open the envelope to see what was inside. I reached in empty so then the joke finally hit me brian a no prize <laughs> was actually no prize? just just an empty envelope <laughs> so and they took the time to send these things out you know 
to I don't know how many thousands of people in, in you know, those years they were doing it. But that was their joke. You know, it looks really official and it's empty. But uh, like I said, I don't have the biggest and best collection. But some of those people that do have bigger collections than me, I don't think they have an earned no prize. So this is my claim to fame, Brian. I'm clinging on to as much <laughs> as I can. <laughs> so that was uh, that was my claim to fame. But um, I did have a chance in that other frame with my, my first ever comic book. I had a chance to uh, meet Stan Lee a couple times. Uh, and one time was here in Pittsburgh at the comic con before I got married, my wife stood in line with me and she took this photo of, of Stan and a couple other characters behind him. That's and great. recently the woman who ran the convention, she's the one to let me stand behind Stan because they weren't allowing people to take picture with Stan because he was on the time limit. In fact, I was afraid I wasn't even going to get my things signed that day. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we paid for the signatures, but he was on a short time limit. And when I got to the, the table, I asked her, could I jump behind? Cause she was like my local comic shop at the time. And she said, yeah, go quick, go quick. So we did that. And summer, she sent me a picture through Facebook. I didn't remember that she jumped up and took the same picture at the same time. And oh, you, wow. you can see my first ever comic book is on the table there uh, that he had getting, just getting the SIG. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. So That's great. That, that was cool. And I, I mentioned earlier, Brian, that I went, I, I had the blessing of going to John Romita's home. Uh, I have a really good friend in collecting that was really close to John Romita. I'm going to go visit him a few times a year. And, and uh, I kind of bugged him enough to take me along uh, in 2019. But it, that was kind of surreal to be sitting in, in John's home with, with John and his wife. Wow. Just sitting there and talking about Spider-Man or getting some things signed by John. But, you know, so a lot of these things, like, like I said, I don't know how, you know, all these things kind of happen to the same person, but you know, for some reason, you know, I, I truly believe that it's not just a whole bunch of coincidence, coincidence that have happened to me. I truly believe that part of the plan for my life, from God's plan, was to be connected to Spidey. And all the all these things have happened to me, you know, repeatedly that that are, are just wild. I mean, I'm on, I'm on TV shows now. I'm on interviews with you. <laughs> How does this happen to just a regular <laughs> little old guy from Johnstown? But and going going to these conventions, I've had a chance to meet some other superstars. Uh, the last couple months that is mr roy thomas yes yep he took stan's place as editor-in-chief and he also was a great writer you know he created the vision wrote conan, a lot of conan, right big big conan uh, conan he, yep yeah. he was writing all the conans and a lot of great books but he, it was cool i had a chance to sit at the table with him and his manager and his his wife at a convention and eat brunch you know so <laughs> again like i just kind of walked into these things and and good things happen i'm so blessed by it and this gentleman, he asked me to take a picture with him, which is kind of backwards. Uh, <laughs> Keith Williams, he's an inker, longtime inker uh, comic book professional. But some of these guys, they see the Ditko Spider-Man costume and they see the webs under the armpits and they, they come running after me. Like whether they're vendors, you know, even older guys than me that have been vending for a while and they're kind of like almost half asleep selling their comic books at the convention. <laughs> they see a Ditko and they come running because they, they never see someone in the Ditko right, costume. The classic, the classic. Know, with, the web, yeah. with the webs under the armpit. And while I'm looking at this poster, that reminds me that this is a repro right here, Brian, but I do have the original. And it's it was on display at the Ditko exhibit for two months. And I told Bottleworks to hang on to it because their, their art center might eventually, they're hoping to turn a small part of it into a permanent Ditko exhibit. Oh, wow. So, okay. So mine is in a, po a frame down there. It's kind of beat up. I got it in 2020 on eBay. It was beat up, but that's the only thing that a high school math teacher could afford. But <laughs> these were only mail away from 1965 in the comic books. And they cost a whole dollar 99 cents, Brian, back then. Wow. <laughs> six foot six foot poster. But uh, I got this one just to kind of be a placeholder in here because I missed that big one that was in here for a couple of years. But yeah, the, the Ditko poster, I, I, I was so glad when I got it because. You know, Dick Coach from Johnstown, from Johnstown. This poster is a classic. And the one thing that I don't have that's Ditko, and I really need one, I even have a frame for it ready, Brian. So <laughs> someone out there can help me find an original Ditko Spider Man send away, mail away t shirt, the white one. Uh, yeah. I need it in decent shape, but I have the repros. I wear them all the time, but I need an original to put it up on my wall here. But that's the one I'm looking for, Brian. So someone out there can help me. I would greatly appreciate that. And, and, you know, that's one of the amazing things that they did in, in the 60s and, and 70s with the, you know, the 
coupons and the mail-in where you had to cut something out of a book. You know, and yep. you think of that today where so many people are collecting comic books because of the value of, of books that, you know, cutting something out of a book would be, you know, unheard of. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if you did it yourself, Brian, but I was a Stan Lee follower in the seventies as a nine-year-old, 10-year-old. And I did cut out all the Marvel value stamps. <laughs> I don't think I ever cut out the value stamps, but I certainly had cut up comic books, Spider-Man, like like you had said earlier. Yeah. You know, taking the images out and posting them up on my yep. wall or yep. things like that all over. Yeah, I would, you know, scissors and, and have characters all over the place. So, yeah. yeah. And I, I, you know, you had to mail away for those Marvel value stamp books to like paste your stamps in it. And those books now are very valuable. Uh, like one where you put the stamps into the booklet. So, uh they're several hundred dollars on eBay if you find them anymore, but I still have my original. It's not out on the table today, but uh, I, I still have my original. I didn't fill it the whole way up, Brian. I didn't cut that many stamps out, <laughs> well, that's but it, it, it was pretty full though at the time. But, um, but yeah, I did whatever Stan Lee said to do. Um, the, the other thing that I wanted to show you uh, here, I'm, I'll bring this up closer, I guess. I a couple of things in the front, but this one here is another version of my first ever item that I got as a kid and it's the Marvel superhero sparkle paints kit and oh, you can wow. see someone from my family bought it because they saw Spider-Man on there Ditko Spider-Man and there's other there's Thor uh, it must have been the summertime because he's wearing the shorts <laughs> <laughs> they forgot the color in the his 70s uh, short shorts on yeah. yeah they forgot the color <laughs> in his, his legs they gave him some short shorts but uh, what this is is uh, there's five pictures in there that are already like colored but you can and there's sparkle paints in here too. I'm not going to take this out right now, but uh, you take these spreader brushes and you spread the sparkly paint just to act, you know, accent your your uh, posters they gave you in there. The little mini oh, posters. Okay. But uh, th these were these are really hard to come by these days, and I'm sure I paid uh, a few hundred times as much as I did <laughs> when I was when someone bought it for me as a kid back in the in the, in the 60s. But Kenner sparkle paints that was my first ever uh, collectible item. The, the item that I'm most connected to, though, uh, Brian, I'm, I'm going to get it off the table here. Sorry for getting so close to the camera. That's okay. Back in 1973, I was nine years old again, and I was going to uh, to my local department store to make my Christmas list. And most toys back then, you know, like if I got these Migos for Christmas some years, you know, these oh, were yeah. only like these were only like four or five dollars, you know, at the most, maybe three or four dollars. You know, really expensive toys were maybe ten dollars. Well, I spotted something that I wanted and it was twenty five dollars. Oh, and my wow. mom, my mom, you know, was already on her own. You know, we left my dad because he was he was getting into alcohol too badly at the time. But, and I knew she couldn't really afford it because she was only on a basically a little bit better than minimum wage job. So, you know, I asked for this item on my list, but I, I felt guilty asking for it. I didn't really think I was going to get it. And uh, it made its way under the Christmas tree that year. So oh, I was wow. really surprised. But and here it is. It's a uh, 1973 AM radio of Spider-Man. Oh, wow. And it's only AM, not FM. Right. And, uh, you know, this is mine from childhood. It's a little beat up. Uh, I took the That's... battery door door off because it was broken when I, I I was too impatient to get it off one time. <laughs> um, but that that's the most emotional piece of my collection because I realized how much she sacrificed for me and how much she supported my hobby. But in recent years, I got one off eBay. That's still in the box, and I got oh, John, wow. Romita, John Romita to sign it when I took it to his house. Very and nice. inside the box here, I'm opening it up for you. It, this box was totally unused. It came with a, a card that showed you how to do the battery, just in case you couldn't figure that out on, on your own as a kid. And everything in the box here is totally sealed. Oh, wow. Whoops, there goes the battery. Yeah. <laughs> the ba the, the battery original is battery, even, too. The yeah. battery is even sealed, so it won't explode. But yeah, it sits in here, but it's all sealed up. So none, wow. of this, yeah, so none of this has been opened. So it was kind of cool that I could recapture, you know, the item I got for Christmas in the same box and, and, and still sealed up. Uh, so that's, that's, that's one that's, that's near and dear to my heart. Yeah, wow, that's great. <laughs> and do you have, I, so, go I have one item that I remember as a kid was the, the Spider-Man web shooter that had the little, you know, rubber, um, you Suction know, cup. Uh, dart, little rubber yep. dart on it with a string. Yes. I think I have one right here. I'm going to pull it out. That was that was the toy. I would run around the neighborhood thinking I was Spider-Man shooting, you know, trees and whatever I could, you know. 
yeah, when I got mine, you know, I was in fifth grade, but I, I still was hoping that it was going to be able to support me uh, swinging around town. But uh, <laughs> I just found mine. My mine's in a box. It's a little uh, bit yeah. broken up. A little bit broken up. Yeah. And here's one of the darts with a little yeah. cape on it. Yeah. But uh, those, I, I'm trying to get some. I used to, I've had so many things, Brian, that I've sold over the years. And I'm trying to get that one back. But in package, that one's really, really expensive these days. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I, one that I, I look for periodically on, on uh, eBay, but it's very, very rare. And when you do find them, they do, like you said, they do go for a lot of money. Absolutely. I mean, we can only do so much, Brian. We're not yeah. mega millionaires <laughs> here, but um, I wanted to, to do something that people have been asking me about this radio at, when I go to conventions and other places, like, does it still work? They yeah. want to know if it still works. So live here with you, Brian, we're going to try it out. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, not gonna use the the old, I'm not going to use the old original battery. I got a brand <laughs> yeah. new battery and we're going to test it out here. I'm plugging it together. I used to use this, this, this uh, radio, Brian, to, to listen to, to radio in the seventies and especially like trivia contests on, you know, they'd ask trivia on certain nights of the week. All right. Sure. Yeah. So I got it plugged in, Brian. Let's see if it works. I'm turning it up. Ah, uh, nothing's happening yet. I'm not sure. Nope, it's not working right now. So I'm going to <laughs> see if I can get it working. But we tried it live. We tried, here it. we tried it. We tried it live, Brian. These things, too, when you we were mentioned about sending away uh, for items. Did you ever get the Foom magazines, Brian, back in the day? No, um, I don't think I did. Uh, there was a fan club called Friends of Old Marvel. It's called Foom. And the magazines now are pretty expensive when you find them. But uh, especially issue number 10, because people claim that it's the first appearance of the new X-Men, like before okay. Giant Side came out. Well, they had places, things that you could send away for. And this is one of the beautiful things. This one I got recently unused, still sealed in its Ziploc bag that they mailed it out in. Oh, it's, wow. a, it's a bronze medallion. And it's Spider-Man done by John Romita beautiful like three-dimensional artwork and on the back there's also artwork and words and things on the back oh wow that's great john ramita but uh that was one of the that and the uh john ramita rock comic were both in the same issue of foom and those are the first things i ever mailed away for and you can see the rock comic posters on the wall over there uh and the rock comic itself did you ever did you ever buy a rock comic brian uh no i don't think i did this is the cover of it. Spider-Man, a rock comic. And the back was beautiful artwork by John Romita as well. Oh, yeah. And then when you opened it up, it was a gatefold cover. And I've really gotten into this collectible recently because I'm finding like a lot of variants of the of the labels on the record and things. But big, giant gatefold cover. Oh, wow. Look at that. Five different beautiful John Romita comic strips. No words. You know, right. Oh, that's great. So what you did was you put your record album on uh, on and you turned it on on the record player and you would hear these stories going on and you'd hear the sound effects and people you know making their voices and things and at the end of each episode when you hit the end of the kingpin here there's a cool 70s song playing <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> ron dante he did like the archie's music he was the guy that, that did did the uh the music for for that record album so you know, he, he did all the, all the, the music for the whole album. And it was just, a, it's, I, I was just, I would just stare at it for hours. I would listen to it and stare at it for hours and just had so much fun listening to that as a kid. But, but it, this, this is the poster that comes inside of the album. It opens up, uh, it was folded and this one was mounted on a board and someone got John Romita to sign it and I, I bought it off somebody, but then you could see Alex Ross you know, imitated it down here. And back behind me here is a poster. I don't know if it's, if it's similar, this one over here to the one that you got. When you were yeah, that was that was a similar pose, and it had the 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 wording. The Amazing Spider-Man was above Spider-Man. Oh, it was above. Uh, him. Okay, above. Yeah, and because I had the signature, you know, was below. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, and yeah. I, I don't know if you've seen those posters on eBay too that say, you know, uh, Spider-Man was here or something like that, or the Green Goblin was here. Like they they have actual posters like that uh on ebay that are unused and maybe that was the kind of, that you got yeah I'll have, I'll have to look you know it's something i haven't i haven't you know looked to try to see if i could could find yeah. but yeah that was a poster that 
like I said, there's two very vivid memories. The, you know, the, the breakfast at JC Penney's with Spider-Man and, and the play world. Um, and I think I'm, I'm trying to think, I think the toy at the time was, it was kind of like a Spider-Man shield and it had like a pull string and it had yeah. like a little disc that would yep. fly off. Yeah. You, you can still see those on eBay too. It's called a power shield. Power shield. That okay. Yeah, that was the, that was the toy they were promoting oh, cool. that day at, at the toy store. And they had, you know, an in-store appearance of the Green Goblin and Spider-Man. So oh, that, that is so cool, man. I, yeah. I, I love hearing stories like that about people that, that saw things. And, and uh, I, I saw actually the, the very first live action Spider-Man before they started sending them out to the to the toy sh- uh, stores and stuff like that, uh, there was a live stage show. And in 1973, it was going around in certain c- cities in the U.S. And for some reason, it came to Johnstown. But it was a weird mishmash of characters. It was called the Bullwinkle Show. It was a live stage show. It had Bullwinkle and Rocky. It had King Kong, Dracula, and Spidey, of course, and Tom <laughs> and Jerry and all these other characters. Wow. So I went to see it, and it was live on stage. And... It had two acts, and all through the first act, no Spidey intermission. All through the second act, no Spidey. And in the last minute, Spidey came on stage with a net and threw it over Dracula and saved the day, and that was the end of the show. Oh wow! So I sat through that, but they got a, we we were allowed to go to the stage and meet the characters. But but that's a very uh, not very well known entertainment uh, that happened with Spider Man. It was the very first live action before uh, the uh, Electric Company came out in 1974. Uh, this was this was the first live action Spider-Man anywhere in the world. Oh wow, that's great! Yeah, yeah we 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 took uh, I think we took our kids, uh, and this probably had to be early two thousands to a Broadway show. Yeah, uh, uh, and I, I, I'm trying to think. I don't think it ran that long. It was maybe a year or two that it was on Broadway. Yeah, um, but, it, but a lot you know live action you know Spider-Man show. Yeah, so I went that to was, that. I went I went to that myself twice. My brother, for, for some time, he was in Long Island, like you mentioned, but for the last maybe 25 years or so, he's been right in New York City. Mm, okay. I was I was going to visit him every February doing an event, a charity event that he was running in the Spider-Man costume. I would go up and, and visit and do that. And I went to Broadway produ- production when it was in its uh, trial run, which was the longest trial run ever. And then <laughs> I went back the year later when it was in its real run. And you can see over here, I have a poster of it. I think it's in the shot still. Oh yeah, uh, this one with the, with the red background here. That one is, is uh, the Broadway show uh, poster that he he kind of uh, got it framed and matted for me uh, as as a gift for for doing those events. But I really enjoyed that Broadway show, and a lot, a lot of people talk negatively about it. But it was sold out, Brian. Every time you went, I'm sure. It, oh we, yeah, yeah. Tickets were were yeah really tough to get. Yeah, yeah it, yeah. it was sold out. People came out with smiles on their faces. I mean, it's not classic theater. You know, right. it's, it's not like one of the best Broadway productions of all time, but people talk so negatively about it and I'm hard on Spider-Man, you know, uh, entertainment. Like I, I really didn't like the 1977 TV show and even the electric company. I was kind of too old for, to enjoy that when he was on there and not talking and just making a noise and people would read the word balloons, but, right, right. but I, I enjoyed that musical <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me, it was very successful but it just didn't run long enough to make money because it was the most expensive uh, musical ever right. made. Yeah, yeah, because of the the special, you know, different special effects and harnesses and things. Yeah, it was a very e- expensive production. Um, so yeah, and yeah, to be successful, you know, those shows need to run for a long period of time to be able to really recoup, you know, yeah. m- money. Yeah. When you went, did they have the band members up on stage from you two, or were they down in were all the musicians down in the orchestra? Orchestra. Uh, they believe they were orchestra. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah, during the trial run, they had him up on stage. That was, they, they did a lot of changes in between the two, uh, the long trial run they had. And then the actual run for that Broadway musical, they made a lot of changes. So that was one of the changes. They got the guys with the guitars off the stage. <laughs> yeah. And, we, and, you know, I'm also happen to be a big fan of U2. So to have U2 and then working on something Spider-Man related was like, wow, these two, two of my favorite things are, you know, coming together. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and some people speculate, you know, Steve Ditko probably lived pretty close to that theater. And you know, did he have to walk past and see the big billboard, you know, when he was going to his his office or, you know, where he do his drawings and stuff? Or, you know, you just have to wonder, you know, what, what all did Steve Ditko see? What didn't he see? And what did he experience? And, you know, he was the, the co-creator of Spider-Man. Right, right. And something about Ditko, too, uh, uh, people not 
many people understand, but some of us do, and maybe you do, Brian, that uh, he actually did a lion's share of the work when on the Spider-Man comic, much like Kirby did on the other comics. That, you know, Stan couldn't write all those comics in, in, in one month. And, and I love Stan. I'll never vilify him. You know, he was a great promoter and he was great with the dialogue. But even Stan said, these guys bring me the finished book. I'll look at it, understand the story. Then I'll fill in the word balloons like I'm like I'm doing crossword puzzles. Is the way <laughs> Stan said it. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, the last year or so, maybe longer, Steve and Stan weren't even talking to each other. And, and Steve would bring in, you know, all his ideas done. The book was done. Bring it to the office. And a middleman would take the book into Stan's office and Stan would approve it, add the dialogue and it would be done. Or if, if he wanted something changed, he'd write a note. And that's the way it happened. So Steve was coming up with all the ideas on his own. Well, you know, that last year or two of, of right. work on Spider-Man. So a lot of people don't understand how much Steve did or the other artists did. And they were also super creative those early years. That, you know, it's just, just incredible. But, but Yeah. You know, I think Stan gets a lot of the credit because he was, like you said, big promoter, you know, kind of the face of Marvel. Yeah. Uh, and just, you know, kind of that big personality. Um, yeah. I love, but, yeah. I, love, I love, I love Stan. I love him yeah. for, for doing that. And, and, and together they created magic, you know, if they were by themselves, I don't know if the magic would have been there, you know? Right. So it was magic together, you know, and it, it's just so cool that, you know, Steve was such a creative guy, the rogues gallery of Spider-Man. I can't, I, I can't see another character in comics. You know, Batman has a great rogues gallery. So does the flash. So do some other people, but Steve came up with those characters in less than three years that are still, great villains today. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, that, and that, so that, that's probably a question I should have asked you. Who is your favorite, uh, Spidey villain? That's a, that's a kind of a tough one, but you know, I go, I go with the one that I thought was most deadly as a kid and most, most dangerous was the green goblin. Cause he knew Spider-Man's secret identity. So I, you know, I've always been excited about the green goblin and, you know, I wasn't so thrilled when they brought him back, you know, about uh, 25 years ago, but, uh, they've done some pretty cool things that when they brought them back from the dead in the comics, but how about yourself? Yeah. You know, I think green goblin or, you know, I've always, I always liked doc Ock, you know, because I think because of his intelligence and, yeah. you know, you're, you're pairing his intelligence with his, you know, with his, um, you know, technology. I think, you know, he could be, uh, you know, he could be one of the deadliest, uh, you know, as well, um, you know, because yeah, of, sure. because of his smarts. So, yeah, yeah. yeah there's so many great, villains in those first 38 issues that you can't go wrong with anyone i i would never uh debate anybody uh, yeah right yeah <laughs> no, it's true. Rid, it's, it's very true. Villains, you can't go wrong with picking one as your favorite well bruce thank you so much this has been this has been a little bit of an education for me even though uh you know i consider myself a pretty big uh you know spider-man fan but and then taking me a trip down memory right lane showing off some of these you know some of these uh toys and and collectibles just you know really amazing. So I have links down below in the description of the video for your uh, YouTube channel, your Instagram, and, and obviously your website. So if, you know, if anybody's not familiar or would like to learn a little bit more about Bruce, please go check him out, follow him on Instagram, go check out his website. There's a, a bunch of information I've been reading through on his website. Yeah. So definitely go, um, yeah, go check that out. Come see me at a convention. One of the conventions I was at, uh, Comic-Con Erie, uh, they made this little poster for me. I couldn't believe when I got to my table, I'm like, Wow, you made a poster for me, but uh, I really enjoy talking to people at conventions. And and if anybody out there has a convention they'd like to suggest, I have to apply and they have to accept me. But I like to try to get around as much as I can. You know, I can't afford to drive real far, but if the convention is willing to 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 pay for my transportation, maybe I can get to a local convention near you guys. But but like you said, uh, you're learning some things today. I've learned a lot from the, the true Spider-Man experts out there. And like I said, I've been blessed to meet so many knowledgeable guys. Uh, ladies, uh, people that collect Spidey, and and they they've blessed me over the years with their knowledge, and and have uh, helped me to understand a lot more about Spidey, Steve Ditko, uh, the whole genre. Yeah, no, it's great. It's great, and you know, somebody to, to you know, like I said, for to have somebody else who's as knowledgeable as you, and, and just you know, pick your brain for a little while and have a, have a great conversation. It's uh, it's great. Yeah, and hopefully. Um, I know, you know, so there's a pretty big community of comic book collectors on YouTube and, you know, have YouTube channels and discuss, you know, all things comics. Um, one of the big cons that um, a lot of the community is targeting this year is Heroes Con 
It's in North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes. I think it's June. That's, that's kind of one of the big ones that, um, you know, big chunk of the YouTube community is, um, going to try to attend. Uh, and there's another great one up in Connecticut, um, terrific con. Um, that's a usually summer event as well. I think July, um, is yeah. another, uh, smaller con, you know, more, um, you know, not as big as you know, New York city comic con, something like that. So those yeah, are cool. two that, yeah, that, that are uh, pretty popular within the, the YouTube, you know, comic book community. So. Yeah. I try, I try to apply as many as I can, Brad. And, uh, like I said, I, I've been accepted to 12. I have 10 coming up, uh, this year in 2023 already. So, I'm always, I've, I've applied to the big ones, you know, San Diego, New York, uh, and, and I haven't gotten in there yet, but uh, they have so many panels going on at those that I don't know how many people would even come to see me if I did get there, but, <laughs> yeah. but I'm going to still go uh, keep on swinging for, for the fences and I'll, I'll try uh, just about any con if, if, uh, if, if I get there, I, I'd love, love to be there. Oh, that's great. Well, Bruce, again, thank you so much for, for coming on and, and showing off, uh, you know, your collection and, and, and chatting with me. So really do appreciate it. I appreciate it, Brian. And all I want to say is God bless you and God bless anybody that's watching and keep on collecting and collect what you love. Yeah, I agree. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you.